Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we implemented something called an effect. And here you can see my example effect in action. It is caffeinated, which makes him very speedy. And then it wore off. So that's how we made our effects work. They are attached to your moving entity. They can affect him in different ways. And eventually they'll wear off. And today we're going to couple it with an action. And you'll see how in now. So let's get to it. First of all, I don't want this caffeinated effect anymore. Let's just get rid of it. And it says not safe to delete, but do it anyway. And all right, we don't have any effects left. So let's make a package in the entity package. Make one called action. And inside of action, you guessed it again, make a class named action. And we want this class to be abstract. And here's the thing. This will be different, of course, from an effect. And I'm not going to have any implementation in this class, which means this class could have been an interface. But I'm going to keep it abstract for consistency, since I've had abstract base classes in almost all of my packages. So it is the same. I mean, we could add implementation here if we wanted to, but we could have done that if it was an interface as well. We could have just refactored it to an abstract class. So it's really just how you want to do it. And for me, I feel like the consistency is key here. That's what I'm basing my decision on. All right, enough about that. Let's make some abstract signatures. So the first thing we're going to need is, of course, the updates, which will use a state and a moving entity. All right, let's close that off. So the second thing that I want is something equivalent to the should delete, something that'll tell me if the action is done. So I'm actually going to call it is done. Abstract Boolean is done. All right. And also what we want is actually a way to get the name of animation name, the animation uh, that is coupled with our action. So I think this is it for our little base class. Let's make something that uses it. So I'm going to make something called a cough since that's what we're going to have in our game. So this cough of course extends action. So we need to implement the methods and now we got them all. So the animation name is easy. You can return cough and we already have that uh, in our resources. So yay for us. But for the is done, I think that for the cough action, and I believe it will be different for every action, but for my cough action, I actually want it to live for a second. So we're going to implement it much the same way that we did for the effect. So just make a private int lifespan in seconds. All right. And then alt insert, make a constructor, but don't take this in because lifespan in seconds is always going to be game loop dot updates per second. So if we don't multiply this with anything, this is basically a second, right? So he's going to cough for a second. And in the update, we need to decrement the lifespan. All right. And now we can just say that if lifespan in seconds is less than or equal to zero, then we are done. We've coughed our second. So I think this is it for the cough. Now we need to do some stuff inside of our moving entity to make it work. First of all, give him an action. So this needs to be an optional because we might not have an action. And I don't want it to be called that optional. We might not have an action. We don't have to. Also, we're not having a list of actions because right now you can't queue actions. Either you have an action and then you can't do another action or you don't have an action. So import optional. And let's just make it something, initialize it to an empty optional. 
All right, so now we're in our update method, right? So we want to update our action if it exists, which means we're going to be having if statements. And I would like to have as few as possible inside of our update method. So let's create handle action. And that will need to take in the state. Let's also do handle motion. And we'll move this motion code. And you'll see why in just a second. So first of all, the handle action is if action is present, then we want to do action get and update using the state and this, which is our moving entity. And that's it for that. Let's now generate the handle motion. Let's move this code. Control X. Ooh, sorry. Uh, there we go. So now inside of the motion, the thing is, in this game that I'm making, you're not going to be able to walk and and make an action at the same time. So we're not Mega Man, right? Uh, you can't shoot and walk at the same time. So either you're walking or you are coughing. And if you're coughing, you have to you have to stand still. You have to stop walking. You have to stop everything and cough, right? That's how it'll work for us. Therefore, we want to check if not action is present. Then we want to update it using this controller. But if it is present, actually, I'm thinking of there are actually several ways that we could do this. But I think we're going to do it like this. It's this easiest way. So we'll just tell the motion to stop. And it's, um, you need to have this in this else statement. Otherwise, your movement vector might have been initialized to something. But since we're doing the actual update here, it wouldn't get set to zero unless we are in the update and the controller is sending nothing. So that's our two options. Either we give it a controller that answers false to everything, and we could easily make that controller like a stop controller or whatever that always answers false. Or we could tell the motion to stop and we're going to use this in other places later. So I think this will be the easiest way to do it. And the way we do it is we give it a new vector 2D that is empty. So just zero, zero. So this way we've told it to stop. All right, so we've handled the motion. We've handled the action. We need to clean it up. So if action is present and action get is done, then we want our action to be an empty optional. All right, now we also need to decide the animation. So if action dot get, oh, sorry, action is present, of course. And let's just get that up to an else if. So if it's present, then we want to do animation manager, play animation, and we can do of course the action get get animation name. so in our case it will be cough all right hopefully this is enough what we need to do now is to give someone the cough so we can see it so let's just give everybody the cough and we haven't given it a way to perform the action yet so we're gonna do that just say new cough and import the call and generate the perform method inside of the moving entity. And this doesn't have to be a cough or it shouldn't be a cough. It should be an action, of course. So let's make sure that action is equal to an optional of action. And of course, since we are taking in a variable called action here, when we say action, we have to put this in front. So the action inside of our class to an optional of the action that is an argument here. All right, so let's just try it out and see if it works. And it did, everybody was coughing everywhere. And then the second was up and the action went away and now nobody's coughing anymore. And it won't come back unless we do something about it. So I'm just gonna check how much time I've used. 
and I've used 10 minutes. Uh, do we have enough time to do this? Sure, I've been able to keep a few of these short. I'd really like to make an effect that... So let's make an effect called, effect called sick, right? And it extends effect, right? So let's create a constructor matching super, and this doesn't take in a lifespan. And we'd like for him to be uh, sick for the duration of the game. So let's uh, call it integer dot max value. So that'll be so large that, it, well, our entity is going to be sick for our entire game. Uh, okay. So we need to override the update method. Public void update state state moving entity entity. So remember to call super with the state and the entity. All right. So what is it that we want to do? We need to have a cough rate. So just make a private static final double cough. Sorry, my fingers are all over the place. Let me move this. Cough rate is equal to, and if we do this, one uh, divided by game loop updates per second, then this would mean on average, because we're going to use, um, we're going to use random, but on average, it would cough once every second. And we don't, I don't think we wanted to cough that much. So let's say 10. What this is saying now, of course, is that integer division in floating point context. So this can handle decimals, but we're only dividing integers. So it's not going to end up as a decimal. So one of these, just you just have to specify that it's a double. And then it will be happy. Because if one of them is a double, then the division will be a double division or floating point division, I guess. Um, so this will be good. All right, so inside of our updates, let's use if math.random, which as we knew from before, uh, gives you a random number between zero and one. If that is less than our cuff rates, then we want to cough. So in our entity, oh, entity, <laughs> in our entity, let's do perform new cough. All right, to import that class. So now inside of our game state, instead of giving it a cough directly, we need to give them the, we need to give them add effect and we have to make this. So add effect, new sick. All right, so let's import this and let's generate this inside of our moving entity and it doesn't it shouldn't be f sick it should be an effect of course and not fa effect all right thank you all right so effects dot add effect let's see if we missed something let's just play that and we missed something let's see what we oh we didn't miss anything this is good. So the way that we implemented our animation manager earlier isn't working when we have introduced the cough uh, animation. And I'll pop over there and tell you why right now. It's in the GFX package. All right, so what happened now was we actually got X plus width is outside raster, right? So we tried to get a sub image outside of what our current animation sheet, which of course is an image, so outside its bounds. And what is the reason for that, you say? It's because our frame index was remembering where it was at from our previous animation. So our stand animation and our um, walk animation are both four frames long. While our cough animation is shorter, and I don't remember if it's three or two, but it's shorter. It's not as long, which means that when it switched animation, it played a new animation. Then the index was basically out of bounds. So we never reset the index, but also we can't reset the frame index here in play animation because we call this every update. So if you're walking, we call this every update with the walk. And 
to fix this because we don't want to not call this every uh, update because that would mean we need to save this state inside of our entities and I don't necessarily want to do that I guess it's not the end of the world but I don't really want my entity to have to know more about the animations than it has to it already knows this of course but it is also bounded to this I don't want to bloat it with a lot of variables so I mean the animation manager its job is to know about the animation right so what we can do instead is let's just introduce it here private string current animation name and let's just make it something so it isn't so we don't get an old pointer and now when we play animation we can check if the name the incoming name if name equals a current animation name actually what we want to know if is if it doesn't equal current animation name right so if it's not the same animation that we want to play that we're already playing then let's get the new image and also let's set the name uh, sorry current animation name to the name coming in and let's set the frame index to zero all right or if it is the same do nothing right so let's try that again all right now they are coughing and they're walking and they have to stop and cough and then they keep walking so this is awesome this is exactly what we wanted so thank you for watching and I'll see you soon again hey door